Hello, my name is Prabhu Satyamurthy. I am the GM of Liquid Jet Business Unit at Floor Systems. Uh, this is the Liquid Jet that we announced at, uh, recently announced at OCP. Uh, this is a very high performing cold plate, uh, different than the conventional cold plates that are, that are currently being sold uh, uh, for cooling the, AC, the, the GPUs at the hyperscalers um, uh, for say NVIDIA's uh, NVL72. Um, and this is a completely different way of cooling it using a, a method that we use for production, uh, production of our air jets cooling system. We, we adopted that to bring it into to liquid jet cooling and that has improved the performance, heat removal capacity by 75%. Uh, we cool the GPUs seven degrees lower, 7.5 degrees lower, um, and it is 50% lighter than the co comparable uh, cold plate. So when I see 7.7 .7 degrees cooler, that's a big deal? It, it is a very big deal. 7.7 uh, .7 deg uh, degrees cooler can translate to $7,000 of, of uh, revenue, additional token revenues for hyperscalers over a five-year period. And th there's a cold plate, we see it right here. So what is the design? What do you do that's special here? Uh, we, we, our design, the, the, let me contrast it first with, uh, with what the Skype plates do, Skype cold, cold plates do. In the Skype cold plates, there is, uh, it, they also have this, this uh, base in which the Skype, uh, Skype structures are. Skyping is essentially a manufacturing process where the, the, the metal is cut uh, or shaved and bent over. And a series of uh, uh, or channels are made, which are long channels. They, the length of the channel would be going all the way across. And the fluid that enters has to travel at least 20 to 25 millimeters in, the, in that channel. And the heat transfer is always higher as the flow enters the cold plate, but then as it moves forward, it heats up, and that heating up will reduce the thermal performance. So you have a performance which has got a large gradient, uh, whereas our system is, you can control it very well. You can put it where it is needed and it'll cool that section preferentially and it also can be cooling the other sections equally well. So it can be much more uniform when needed or it can be targeted to hotspots when needed. And here you illustrate the hotspots. What do you show here about what you just said? Yes. Here, what we are showing is, if you have a, this is a 20, 25.8 millimeter by 32 millimeter die, in which a 10 by 11 millimeter is the hotspot. So that is where the highest wattage is required. So 400 watts are going into that section, right? So and you can target exactly the hotspots? That, that hotspot is kept at 96.4, uh, in the 96 temperature, uh, junction temperature. So that is a, that's a big deal because a conventional uh, cold plate that, that we talked about can go up to 300 watts per centimeter square. Whereas we can cool, with a, with a liquid, liquid metal tim, we can go all the way up to 600 watts per centimeter square. And what's the uh, manufacturing technology that you are taking over from the air jet to do something like this? So uh, we, in the air jet technology, we've, we brought in the way of, uh, Semi, using semiconductor processes on a metal wafer. So that is the technology that, that, that we have borrowed here again. So it is, instead of, instead of making a, a, a design which is based on machining process, this is based on just like a semiconductor where the, the material is etched, you have a design that you come up with and then you etch, the, uh, etch, the, uh, etch various sections uh, using uh, you know wet etchings technology, and then we construct, reconstruct the entire base. And is the base that's in a semiconductor process, or the whole no, the whole thing? The base is the base is fundamentally the one which is in the semiconductor process, and it is done on a very large die. So the important part about this is it is very easily scalable. So we make it on a 300 by 300 millimeter wafer and we can then make many dyes out of it, very much like how the semiconductor is, is processed. And what do we see here with all these, this liquid, this, what is the demos here that you're showing? The demos here, let's talk about this one. This is the hotspot demo. 
and it is it is driven by this is the CDU. This is a benchtop CDU. In a in a in a rack mount system, you will have a big CDU, which is essentially a cooling coolant distribution unit. So this is what pumps the coolant into this. So the the, the liquid from here comes in, goes into this part, comes out, and gets back into the system, and that's where the heat is removed. So the the heat from the, the cold cold fluid comes here, goes in into the hot spot, and then cools it. It's collected back, and then the hot hot liquid goes from here, returns to the CDU where it is exchanged with this these fans. There's a heat exchanger, and you remove that heat again. The cool cooler liquid that from from here goes back there. But it, it looks different from this one, right? Yes, this is a different for a single reticle, right? These that one is for, designed for. NVDS GB300 so and Rubin. Uh, two reticles? Two reticles mean there are two dies. So you see this one here, the main die? Main die is made up of two dies. One here and one here. With four HB, uh, eight HBMs, four HBMs each. HBMs are high bandwidth memory. And what else do we see on the screen here? On the screen, what we are seeing is the main die, we, are, we have a flux of 82 watts per centimeter square. That is the base uniform heating that is done on this section. This is the two die section. So this is our TTV. This is not the actual die. This is not an NVIDIA actual die, but this is using a TTV, which is a thermal test vehicle, right? So, and we have cartridge heaters that heat the system, and that is what is underneath in this section here. So this is what is this. So. Underneath here is a TTV with a cartridge heater. And so it's, it cools the GPUs down? That's correct. It cools the GPU and the HBM. And this particular one has got a design where we have, we have just like we said, we can target it to a hotspot. Here, we can target it. If you look at this die here, we will first come into the central section, then go to the next section, then route the flow to this and then the entire flow goes into this one and comes out. So and that, that is happening in a, in a sequence. So the flow, all flow goes into one section first, then the next section, then the next section, and then the, 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 the fourth section. So that's a four stage design that we have implemented here. These are some flexibilities that our design allows, which is not very easily possible with Skype and as effectively. So when I see the air jets, I guess it's thousands and thousands of little membranes. This is not membranes, but no there's membrane. something very small happening here, like a, a lot of different areas here. That's correct. The, uh, the, the difference is in this, the, we have a lot of small features in this. So the, the sizes, the channel sizes are small. The feature, small. Size, feature sizes can be as small as 75 microns. And we have very small channel depths that we, that we have. And also there are multiple layers of it. The manifold layers are multi-level. So put all of that together, we can control it. And in addition, a very important aspect of this is if you can see the weight. This is half the weight compared to half the weight. Half. So less copper, less materials needed and stuff like that? Or? That is correct. It, it's lighter because we also have a, uh, have a different way of uh, designing the, the top cover for this. The back, back cover is, is all, back part, the base plate is all copper. The top has an anodi uh, 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 anodized Different uh, mix. mix. Yeah, it's called copper, copper, copper um, <coughs> plated aluminum. So that makes it a, a very light construction. Is this the most efficient, the most uh, best performance liquid cooling solution in the world? At this point, we think it is. So it could be quite important for the whole AI data centers, the supercomputing industry? That is, that is what we think, yes. And how far Absolutely. is it from mass production? We should be in mass production by June of this year. Uh, and you have different, so you have the, we can, we can, you talk about two reticles, single, yeah. and there's all the different markets that this can go into? Yes, it, it, the, the, there, are, there are ASICs that are currently deployed which are single reticle, and then the ones that we currently see, like for instance, Rubin up to Rubin are two reticles. And we also think as we go along in the, in the next round, we could see four reticles and that's in the Rubin Ultra and, and, and Feynman. 
So we, this would just continue to increase. And the number of flow, or the amount of flow that you put in will also increase. And you just custom design the whole system for each, uh, for each different chip? You can yes. design it optimal? It Exactly. Target the power, exa uh, the, the cooling exactly where it needs to go. That is exactly correct. So we, we, every chip will have regions where the hotspots or where the cores are located and they, their distributions are different depending upon their design, specific designs. And we can design it according to that. You can measure the hotspots? You have a machine that does that somehow? In a actual die, they would have sensors on it. So that would report it. Like this is reporting. This is a silicon die. This one is a silicon, silicon, uh, silicon die. And that is reporting the junction temperature. Very similarly, you would have that. And uh, it's just with the fabs are ready to do this. Yes, we have a fab in Taiwan, which is ready to do that. We are, we are scaling it up as we go. Uh, we, we, can, we can do 10,000 10, uh, a month now, and we will escalate it to a million by next year. A million and, per month. And uh, as I understand, the, the, the semiconductor industry, sometimes they optimize the nanometers and everything, and you could take advantage of all this advancements that happen and just make your products even better, target ever better? Or what is the required the, details that the, would have the optimal performance? The Does that make any sense? Yeah, the opti the, the, there are two, two vectors in which the, the uh, ASIC development will progress. One is the total amount of power that, they are, that needs to be handled. So you can see that it's, it's about 2,000 watts in, in the Rubin. It will go to 4,000 watts as we go, go to Feynman. So this is, this is the escalation that we are going to see in the total power. In addition, the, the hotspots, that the, the levels that we need to reach cool will be in the 600 watts or more per centimeter square. That is the flux, that is the density, power density. The total power is increasing and the power density is also increasing. So ability to cool those sections preferentially is very important. And uh, some, some cost companies are making bigger chips Yes. And you could customize the size of your solution? Absolutely, yes. So you can fit smaller chips, bigger chips? Bigger chips, any, any size, yes. All right, uh, are there other things people want to cool down that you could target also? Or is you're just talking about chips, cooling down GPUs, CPUs, and ASICs? At this point, we're focusing, because those are the areas where the, as I said, the power densities and the total power is continuously increasing. The other areas where, where powers, are in, powers are large usually have lower fluxes. So the cooling requirements are much lower in those cases. But if it is needed, like in the power industry. Uh, 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 SSDs or something? No, not in SSDs particularly, but anything Ram? that. No. 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 Not, no yeah, those, those are not, uh, they, are, they, are, they are, currently they will be, they, you will have to cool them as a surrogate, but that's not the main. They, when, when RAMs and others require cooling, liquid cooling, it is because the ASICs that are driving them or are being are, are used in them are the primary ones that need to be cooled. And they, these also will benefit from that, but that's not the, the driver. And sometimes the bottleneck is the networking, and that's what the HBM is? Yeah, th this is, yeah that's a high bandwidth memory that is needed for processing all the information that, that the GPU is putting out and storing it and retrieving it and all of that. So, there is, a, there is a lot of activity where, where compute happens, the, the storage happens, temporary and, and, and a longer term. So various latencies are to be maintained. So these are, these are important to have them close by to the uh, HBM, uh, to, the, to the main die. That's is again for the total performance of the system. And they're doing a lot of innovation in terms of how they, they network all these chips together. That is correct. And yes. you are ready to cool the whole thing down. This whole thing. So our system will sit on the entire thing. So this, this area, this, these are the HBM area. This is the, this is the main die area. And all of that will be cooled by the single cold plate. Could you say some more in terms of percentage improvement, in terms of efficiency, performance, some more like what could be compared to other solutions? Uh, you say 75% higher? Yeah, so if you, if you look at it, the metric would be how much, how much flow we need to remove a certain amount of power. So flow rate, if you see, is 2.1 here. We are cooling 
we are consuming uh, in this particular case to keep the keep the temperature at 63 again this could be changing i, I want to i want to paraphrase this it's just this. a prototype you're showing off right that's correct the, the, no even this one what we can show here on the shop show floor is showing a 1.1 uh, 1.4 lpm per kilowatt this actually can go all the way to 1 lpm per kilowatt so that is the that is what is the power of this if you ran the, the same con condition with with a uh, with the conventional um, uh, coal plate, this would be much higher. It would be 10 degrees higher. Or they would have to have much more flow, like four or something? That's correct. They would need more flow. So we can cool the, the required 1.4 with 1.4 watts to get to the same temperature. That so means you, you need to run the, cool the liquid down much down, less much than less. other solutions. The flow rate can be much lower. That's correct. So the industry is looking at this, and yeah, yeah. a lot of people are excited. That's correct. Yeah. It it improves not only not only the when you lower the flow rate, you're also reducing the pressure on the uh, on the on the rest of the system. So the the pressure the all the all the connectors that are there in a rack, and there are many. A CDU from there is pumping flow through many racks, and and each of them will have multiple GPUs. So there are multiple connection points through which the liquid is going, and the pressure in them is relieved if your flow rate requirement is lower. So that is also one of the benefits of... Right here I see a, a photo with, the, with your friend, right? So the, I guess NVIDIA is already looking at this, you're already looking at this with we are, them? We are, we, are, we are in discussions with them, yes. And there could be other people you could be in discussions absolutely, with, right? Absolutely. We are in discussion with almost every hyperscaler.